How's it going, people? Today, I'd like to be a little offensive, a little uh, controversial, maybe. Um, I'm going to tell you something about yourself, perhaps. Now, you're going to ask me to back up and explain myself just a little bit. And so I will. So backing up a little bit, I've been reading a quite famous book by Eckhart Tolle. You might be able to guess what it is right off the bat, but if you can't, it's called The Power of Now. There it is for you. Um, Pretty much Tolle breaks down how you can trap yourself in your own mind by listening to your thoughts. You know, you might tell yourself in a certain situation, let's just say you're at the mall, and you're walking to a store, and you just think to yourself, I don't look too good right now. And you listen to it, and so the rest of your mall experience is bad. Now, Toll tells us, don't listen to this. It's not even a part of reality. And so it's quite a helpful book in that regard. And he even goes as far as, you know, don't even listen to your emotions, but we'll save that for another time. And so pretty much that's what I'd like to talk about today. Are you listening to your mind too much? Are you giving it a place in reality when it doesn't even, you know, sort of serve a purpose in reality? So as I was reading this book, you know, I relate back to myself and personal experiences. And I think to myself, I know someone that pretty much is their mind, you know, like they, uh, they're always giving it this this sort of pedestal in their life, and there's really no need for it. So let's just call her Wombo Combo. Wombo Combo. Um, Wombo Combo, I actually work with. And so I've gotten to, well, I'm, I've known them for quite some time, but I've gotten to know them a little bit better, and it's been a different experience working with them. And I, s- I bring up Wombo Combo to say, Wombo Combo has told clients before things that just don't even need to be said. And I think to myself, why are you saying that? And it's because Wombo Combo is listening to her mind. And it just makes these interactions awkward. And so Wombo Combo is a great example of why, you know, we don't need to listen to our minds because it affects other people in the end. It doesn't even, you know, it goes further than affecting just yourself it affects other people and it's affected me in these awkward encounters and so wombo combo you know the power of now would be a great book for is what i'm getting at and so i've been thinking about the power of now obviously thinking about wombo combo and this idea but then i got covid probably the ami the omicron um and it actually kind of knocked me knocked me on my butt a little bit. And so while I was in quarantine, I started watching Seinfeld. You know, Seinfeld for me is constantly referenced throughout my family, but I've never seen the entire series. So I was like, there's quite a bit of content here. Let me uh, let me s- check it out. And so I watched Seinfeld while I'm in quarantine, and as I'm going throughout the series, I realize, hey, George Costanza is a lot like Wombo Combo. And so maybe you are like George Costanza. Maybe even me too much, but regardless, George Costanza's always giving giving into his mind, getting himself into trouble, getting, you know, Jerry, Elaine, and Kramer into trouble as well, and others as well. And so I think to myself, hey, George, Wombo Combo, maybe there's something going on here. And so I get to about halfway throughout the series, and there's an episode, I believe the title is Non-Fat Yogurt, Um, regardless, George and his friends are really, really hooked on this this non-fat yogurt, non-fat. And so they're in the shop one day, eating their yogurt, going about things, and someone from George's past walks into the shop, his name is Lloyd. And George does not like Lloyd. You know, he's kind of like this arrogant guy from Wall Street. He's just a big shot. And George, being paranoid and listening to his mind all the time, is not a big shot. And so, you know, they they clash. 
Lloyd notices George is there, and they get to talking. And George does this thing. Lloyd says something. It's pretty uh, irrelevant. But George, uh, George does this nudge to Jerry to kind of show Jerry why he doesn't like Lloyd. There's a lot of major chicks in this place, huh? <laughs> Something wrong with your arm? Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I bumped my elbow on a desk and uh, injured something, and now it sort of moves involuntarily. Lloyd, obviously wanting to help, tells him he'll hook George up with some sort of a uh, doctor's appointment. Mayor Dinkins got an appointment for him? You mentioned George's name to Mayor Dinkins? There's an appointment that doesn't even need to really happen. And that's sort of what we're getting at here with Toll's points, is that, you know, listening to your mind gets yourself into these situations where you don't even need to be. It causes all sorts of trouble. And so George goes to the doctor's appointment, and the doctor calls him out. He says, George, you're faking it. And George has to lie even further to this doctor that he doesn't even need to be, you know, in cahoots with. And funnily enough, pretty ironically, George hits his arm on the way out on the desk, and uh, he actually develops a real tick. And so that's essentially the message here, is you're listening to your mind, and these you're getting yourself into all sorts of BS listening to your mind. George even now has this tick all because of this mind jail I like to sort of think of it as and so you know you think back to Toll's original point in the book of not listening to your thoughts being free of your thoughts just watching them rather than assigning fact to them and then I think back to Wombo Combo how this is real life obviously it's not it's not Seinfeld, but Wombo Combo gets herself into these situations where it affects more than just her. It's affected me and others. And then I think back to George, who's this exaggerated version of it, but nonetheless, it does have some sort of you know, uh, weight and reality. It's a good example, and that's what makes Seinfeld so good, is that it, it does take these parts of real life and you know, obviously twist them, but it derives the point from from Toll in that specific episode. And so to close, my final point being, if you just watch your mind rather than assign fact to it, you don't have to, uh, you don't have to give it weight. And at the end of the day, watch your thoughts. And that's what Toll has helped me tremendously with. And I hope to sort of show that to Wombo Combo. Maybe even use George as an example. I could use the non-fat yogurt example. But that's the message to you is don't be George if you think you might be like George. Maybe pick up the power of now if you're thinking you are George. Because even though George is this funny guy, there's really no need for these Georges in the world. And essentially... Power of Now is this great tool that we can all use so that we don't have to be George. Because George gets himself into all this useless trouble for no reason. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you later.